A reading from John's Gospel, chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so am I sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold the forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Thomas is one of those figures in the history of the church who has a nickname very much associated with him. For many people, he is simply doubting Thomas. And it is true to say that when we come to this passage, and as Jesus does appear to him, he has expressed some doubts. The disciples had seen him, the other disciples, but for whatever reason, Thomas wasn't with them, and he'd missed out on that, and he hadn't seen them. He had the embers of faith, but they were, they were glowing dim. He was still there with the disciples, but he was slightly hesitant in some of the things that they had said. It's not as if Thomas had turned his back on Jesus. He hadn't. He was still with those disciples, but he was still slightly unsure. And I'm sure you've had that similar kind of experience of being within a church and other people seem to have stronger faith than you do, but yet you're still there. You're still coming. You're still there in the service. Thomas was still there. And when Jesus did appear again to the disciples, this time with Thomas, Jesus showed great grace. He didn't rebuke Thomas. He didn't take him to task for not believing straight away. But he simply offered Thomas the proof that he wanted. Proof that in the end Thomas didn't need. Proof that in the end Thomas rejected because he simply believed. Do not disbelieve, but believe, said Jesus. And Thomas responds with the very first expression of Jesus' divinity by saying, my Lord and my God. This doubting disciple became the first to acknowledge Jesus' divinity. And this is a pattern we see throughout the Gospels. You may remember those two disciples on the way to Emmaus. They had thought that the Messiah had died and it had all been a failure. They had said, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And they were disappointed because to their way of thinking, Jesus hadn't. And so when they met with Jesus on the road to Emmaus, not realising who he was and why would they? They'd seen him crucified. Jesus gently took them through the scriptures to explain quite why it was things had to happen in the way in which they had happened. And they said, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Or there was a leper who came to Jesus and who said to Jesus, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. He, he didn't quite seem to demand it. He was uncertain, but he reached out his hand anyway. And Jesus said, I will be clean. Or the Words of the poor father whose son had been convulsed by these fits. If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. 
Jesus replied to him, If you can, all things are possible for the one who believes. And then the father responded with these words, which are a model of faith for us. I believe. Help my unbelief. There is a reality there that, yes, of course, we believe in Christ. Yes, of course, we follow Christ. But there are times when we're not quite sure when, like Thomas, we're hesitant. Like the father, we believe, but we still have the fringes of unbelief. But we must never forget that we have in Christ somebody who simply looks for the mustard seed of faith. We have in Christ somebody who is willing to step in and make the most of the little bit of faith that we can offer. A Christ who is compassionate, a Christ who takes what we have and makes it something remarkable. So when you pray, when you come before Christ, just take the faith that you have. Acknowledge the fact that you find this difficult. Acknowledge the fact that at times your faith is weaker than at other times. When you pray, have in your mind the faith, the face of Christ who came to coax belief, belief from Thomas, who came to coax belief from the man whose son had these fits, who came to coax belief from the leper, the one who took those two disciples on the road to Emmaus and brought them on. This is the Christ to whom we pray. This is the Christ in whom we have faith.